Greetings from Aaron Lehman Properties. My apologies for getting this out a bit later than I had planned. It's been a wild week of bank bailouts, not to mention the mortgage rate whipsaw we experienced this week. Here's where we stand locally in terms of the housing market. Denton County experienced some lift in the first two months of the year. February home sales bounced from the January lows, putting them 15% higher than the same month last year. Pending sales were up 23% across Denton County. Median and average home prices bounced slightly during the month. The available supply of homes dipped to just 1.7 month supply. As more sellers and builders chop prices in recent months, more buyers step back into the market. A percent of original list prices made marginal improvements for the past two months now. Even with the temporary bounce in activity and pricing, it was still taking longer to sell a home. Average days on the market for Denton County rose to 62 days in February. The local market is still adjusting to this higher interest rate environment and increased volatility. We started off the year with loose financial conditions and a bounce in the stock market. The Powell Fed provided some additional lift by taking the foot off the brake in terms of monetary policy with the first FOMC meeting. That was all the excuse the housing industry participants needed to begin calling a bottom in the housing market. In the land of mortgage finance and real estate, every day is a great day to buy a home, or originate a loan, or write a title policy. Many agents will regurgitate all sorts of financial nonsense if they think it will help them collect a commission faster. We saw how reckless some agents and buyers were during the height of the FOMO madness in the early part of 2022. The February non-farm payroll showed the U.S. economy added another 311,000 jobs in February. The jobs data suggests that we're still dealing with a tight labor market. The February CPI showed headline inflation still at 6%, which is still well north of the Fed's 2% target. Core sticky inflation components were actually slightly worse in February. The housing market, and particularly the new home market, are still showing few signs of recession. This continues to be a major problem for the Powell Fed. It's going to be really difficult to bring down inflation and contain it without a significant increase in unemployment. The Fed could be forced to take rates higher even after this recent banking contagion. There are plenty of real estate and industry participants calling for Fed rate cuts to boost your transaction volumes. Bailout Nation loves cheap money from the Federal Reserve Bank. After more than a decade of zero, or zero interest rate policy, many participants have come to rely on continuous market intervention and interest rate suppression to maintain a comfortable living. The problem for the local housing market continues to be the dramatic decrease in affordability caused by those years of intervention and market manipulation. While many housing industry professionals are quick to blame the recent rise in rates, they completely dismiss the artificially low interest rates and QE that fed the housing market along the way. Liquidity giveth and liquidity also taketh away. Capitalism for thee and bailouts for me. The implosion of Silicon Valley Bank and several other California banks is another reminder of the cockroaches which have yet to be uncovered. Loose financial conditions and cheap money have helped many zombie companies and speculators fly under the radar over the past decade. Now we're beginning to find out who was swimming naked. It's amazing how fast government officials jumped to the rescue of wealthy West Coast speculators. Silicon Valley Tech Bros got a bailout less than three days after Silicon Valley Bank went under. While millions of struggling Americans were seeing their food stamp benefits reduced in March, the Federal Reserve, Treasury, and FDIC chose to bail out the governor of California, Silicon Valley speculators, crypto mavens, and uninsured SVB depositors who ignored basic risk management procedures. Whee! What's going on unnoticed is that the Fed, Treasury, FDIC trio just introduced more systemic risk into the financial sector. Silicon Valley Bank's management was apparently asleep at the wheel. SVB depositors were not innocent bystanders either. They likely knew about the FDIC $250,000 insured threshold. Venture capital apologists and morons continue to suggest that SVB wasn't making bad loans. That's absolute nonsense. What do you call it when SVB, SVB depositors and clients receive generous lines of credit on businesses with no real profits? Silicon Valley Bank was most certainly not a boring conservative bank. The CEO was on the board of directors for the San Francisco Federal Reserve, for starters. California Governor Gavin Newsom also has multiple ties to the failed bank as, and was a customer for years. The SVB executive management team is loaded with recycled GFC participants. CEO Greg Becker and other officers were cashing in millions of stock in the days and weeks prior to the bank going under. Becker had lobbied for looser regulations back in 2018. In testimony to Congress, Becker even touted how the low risk profile of our activities. Go figure. The media landscape is now little with an assortment of not so noble lies about how the SVB bailout was not actually a bailout and no taxpayer money was used. Considering how we just socialized the entire banking sector, you would think Congress would want to impose some meaningful regulations. They could start by inc increasing the amounts banks contribute to the FDIC insurance fund. They could prohibit stock buybacks and cap executive pay. 
If you're going to treat banking as a utility where every depositor is insured, then it's probably a good time to stop rewarding bank CEOs and management for their systemic failures and outright criminal, criminal behavior, which many banks have admitted to over the past decade. While the market tries to sort this out in the banking sector, here's some context on where we stand in terms of policy normalization. Price distortions and the road ahead. Quantitative tightening is still in the early, early stages, although the recent contagion may affect the Fed's stance going forward. It's probably a bit early to call a bottom from the housing market when the Fed hasn't hit terminal rate now that the Fed wants to claim victory over inflation. Powell has barely made a dent in that massive bubble billing balance sheet, which is still over $8.3 trillion. With unemployment still sitting near a 40 year old, it looks like Powell will have to press harder on the brakes to bring down the solar sector. Or if, you, if you were still confused on how home prices in North Texas were able to climb to such dizzying heights coming out of the pandemic, it's really not that complicated. When you throw trillions in stimulus at the financial system, a lot of that money goes into real estate. Homes are certainly part of that equation. Be safe out there. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, it looks like this volatility in the market is going to be with us for a while. Thanks for tuning in.